All right, good evening, everybody. Um, tonight we have a short agenda, just two, two items up for, uh, for hearing. But before we start, we're going to take public comment. Is there anyone here from the public who has anything to say that is not directly related to the two hearings that we're going to hear later on? No? Okay. That being said, we're going to open up uh, for 7 o'clock special permit for ambulance service at 50 Hatfield Street, Northampton, map ID 23B-096. Who's here to speak to that? Okay. Come on up. You can come right up here. I can say your name. Yeah. Uh, Anthony Safridi, Vice President of Operations for Alert Ambulance Service. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Jump right in. Hey, um, so we're looking to utilize 50 Hatfield Street, unit number um, it's three or four. Um, it's the last unit. Um, to have a paramedic truck there to service our federal contract with the VA in Leeds. Uh, we have a five year contract with them and uh, we're required to have uh, a certain response time for non emergent transportation. Our next closest facility is Chickabee and it just doesn't, isn't sufficient enough. Uh, after about a year of looking throughout the, the city here, um, this seems to be the only available spot. It was an auto repair garage prior, uh, so it felt, seems as though it fell under our, uh, for us to utilize it, um, though I was told by Lou that we needed to come in front of you to change a special permit need for going from an auto repair shop for a one ambulance garage. It's change of use, right? Yes. Yeah. So it's just one ambulance in right. the bay. So there's a and it's only Monday through Friday daytime hours. It's uh, Friday nine to five. Correct. Nine After nine. that, it goes to chicken. Yeah, non emergency. I mean, we. No, it's most of our calls are non emergency. The only time I mean, we are available to back and service the residents here under Northampton Fire. Um, which we've talked uh, with Deputy uh, Norris over there. He's happy. He says, you know, like, they're usually pretty okay with their own service here. But uh, happy to have another service available if something big happens. Okay. So you're on call specifically for the VA, but then if something else comes up, we would be available to help service the city. So is it is it continuously manned there from nine to five, or it's just there if you need it from nine? No, to five? it's continuously manned. It'll be there with to a, a paramedic, uh, <clears throat> two EMTs. One will be a paramedic. It will be a paramedic level service, which is the highest level that you can provide at EMS level. Right now, you provide that service, but from Chicopee. So this will supplement Chicopee. Correct. Okay. Any questions from anybody? Seems pretty straightforward. Yes, I've got a curiosity question. Since this is a nine to five operation, it, I mean, I would I would have thought it was a change of use if it were running full evening, but I'm even surprised it's a change yeah. of use. That's my question. It Why seems like it's within the category of use that it would have been relevant otherwise, except for the siren, which is this is that that would be my concern is how often it, it has to come and go from that facility noisily. Yeah, I think that the use, is, I mean, we don't have ambulance service as a special classification, but we lump it in with um, sort of more like. I'm not going to say bus terminal, but more like warehousing of, of vehicles. And that's different from auto repair, the way the zoning classifies it. So um, the original, I, I guess if this was, I, I didn't realize this was in the same space. I knew it was in the same building as the, there was a special permit for an auto repair place. So apparently it's the same um, garage unit, mm -hmm. but that required a special permit just because it's a different classification in the, but it's, in, it's an industrial, the reason why a special permit is it's in the industrial zone, and so it's not really a typical industrial use, and that's why well, it requires the special permit. The original use had to be permitted as well because it wasn't a listed use. It, it wasn't a by right use under the okay. industrial right, classifications. Yeah. In a typical day or week from Chicopee right now, how many times do you service the VA? It can be, <clears throat> it's pretty funny. It can be, we can go a day where we don't utilize it and then it could be a day where they transport the coolie dick maybe three times in a day mm -hmm. it all depends on if the veterans need any assistance or they have any dialysis or any radiation or any x-ray that needs to be done that they can't do at the va center any other questions from the 
questions from the board? No? Anybody here from the public? Uh, any questions? No. Yep. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Second. All in favor? Any further discussion? Mm. Um, it just looks from the diagram that there aren't any residential houses. I mean, the picture I've got. Yeah, and I didn't either. And I did talk to all of our neighbors, and, um, you know, they welcome it. And, um, you know, we've been working close together. And they don't see any issues with traffic or concerns. And yeah, no, I can think the only issue would be sound. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, if you're averaging out one or two trips a day, you know, in the location that's there, there's already... Is it a landscaping, I think, business right there that has mm -hmm. a couple bays already? So it's, it's going to be less frequent than that. So. Yeah, right. DPW didn't have any concern. Yeah. Okay. How about the motion? Uh, I move that, uh, let's see, what's the right way of saying this? I move the special permit for the ambulance service of 50 half Field Street, Northampton, map ID 23B096 be passed. John, all in favor? Good to go. Thank you. Thank you. Two. Yeah. Well, we have ten minutes or so. We have one set of minutes to approve. Come down. And I wasn't at this meeting, so I need somebody to. I read them. I didn't bring a copy with me. I move we approve the minutes of. Why? Oh, really? That wasn't Third? 25th? July 25th. 25th. 25th, 2013. Second. Second, John. All in favor? All right. Now we have eight minutes left. <laughs> uh, do you guys need an update on the zoning? Yes. Good update. My listserv's been a buzz. I don't need an update. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, what's the feedback? So, well, there's one more reading. There were a couple things that the city solicitor wanted to check on in terms of the, well, other things had to go back for public hearing. I don't know if you heard, but there was a proposal to take a step back on the larger projects and see mm -hmm. if there are potentially additional design criteria that could be um, added based on some concerns of probably one counselor now, down to one counselor. Yeah. Um, three? What's that? Mm -hmm. We're three. Yeah. Um, His, but he... He made a proposal that we approved that would have what I, th I thought really addressed the issue. That's yeah. what I thought too. Right. So there were actually several components added to the design piece even once it left <coughs> Planning Board public hearing because um, it went back to council again right. um, in July and then there was a separate ordinance committee meeting at the beginning of August because it got referred back to ordinance. Um, and then Councillor Adams actually added an additional design component related to t the creation of 10 or more units that really looked at um, uh, uh, tying it to the same standards we have in subdivision about infrastructure and the quality of infrastructure and, and looking at um, natural resources and identifying those resources if they may come into play and protecting them. And um, so that kind of was another piece that tied into the larger projects, but uh, I think that the proposal for the nine-month moratorium was really um, as a way to g for just to ensure that that covers it all and have a little bit more deeper conversation about it. Councilors were concerned about it, but the way that they're talking about it in, on council floor is that they would send it back to the planning board to look at. So. I'm just the design stuff? Just the design stuff for bigger projects. So anything more than seven units at a time on a parcel. Now, the <clears> thing that, you know, hopefully, I don't anticipate any larger projects in those districts coming forward in the next nine months. But, um, you know, one of the things that sometimes happens when you create a uh -huh. um, right. situation where you've got seven units is that people put two... Mm -hmm two parcels together and come one at a time. So in total, it's more than seven, but mm -hmm. they don't quite meet that threshold if they do it separately. Mm -hmm. So um, hopefully that won't happen. <laughs> so that's going to be coming forward in the fall. We'll probably put that back on the table for you guys to look. But, 
But so there's one more vote. The council needs to take right. two votes. Right. So uh, September 5th, it'll go back for the final vote. One of the things that the council also wanted to know was ensure that city solicitor was okay with the language for the moratorium and that that piece didn't have to go back for another mm. public hearing. Mm. But so, uh, so he's except for the moratorium. Right. Oh. It's good, but they have yeah. to vote on it again? They, they always vote two times yeah. on um, um, ordinance amendments. So the second vote will be September 5th. So there's that, and then, you know, we've talked a lot about subdivision rules to the subdivision standards, changing those to um, really encourage more low-impact design and potentially, you know, narrower streets and, and um, for urban-type character streets because people, applicants will be reticent to try new things if the rules don't allow for that. So we would really want to take a look at that, and that also might fit in with sort of looking at development standards in the urban context and how we might um, with the larger modify. project yeah with right. the larger project um, so that is um, sort of a preview of what's to come it's encouraging though yeah After what about runoff and all that is that looked at by us or will that be looked at by you? Yeah. Question so anytime there's a major project that's more than 5,000 square feet of construction that yeah. um, Applicants are always required to submit a stormwater um, but would, are, is there any, analysis. Is there any sense that that might be those changed in terms of the design standards f for the impact on runoff in some of these areas? Those are low areas over there. Well, the, the one neighborhood that was mm -hmm. um, discussed more mm -hmm in more detail than other neighborhoods I guess they would say is low around Henry Street but um, <clears throat> we have very specific standard criteria in the stormwater ordinance so um, I think it makes sense to keep that in um, I mean one of the things we could um, do is potentially reference the stormwater because stormwater um, ordinance as the design um, standard that's not there now, um, so we could incorporate it that way. That could be something that we look at. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, so typically, you know, you don't need a stormwater permit unless you're disturbing more than an acre. If these are smaller sites that are not disturbing more than an acre, but they will trigger requirements for meeting a certain stormwater standard, but if we tie it to having to meet the standard regardless of whether you're you know, constructing an acre or right. not, then that might provide mm -hmm. more comfort level too. Mm -hmm. So that's probably something that we can look at. Um, different topic, or maybe somewhat related. Um, received another envelope from a legal law firm. <laughs> oh, same yeah. issue. Don't yeah. 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 The the Wasn't that from the same? Them. Yes. Okay. So well, I don't know I why they sent it twice. One was a demand for a response. And so I should have sent you a copy, but the city solicitor responded. That we were not arbitrary and capricious. <laughs> right. <Okay. laughs> um, and uh, so that's been taken care of from the city side. So whatever, however the, whatever the next step is, you know, we can certainly keep you up to date on that, but it sort of is making its way through with right. that legal process. Yeah. Keep those things going. Yeah, I brought copies of those just to see if I needed to. <laughs> we don't need to keep them, do we? No. no. I don't even. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Like, oh. <laughs> no. I'm not going to the post office especially to pick them up. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> well, with regard to the zoning changes, um, what I had seen in your answer to one neighborhood was the fact that, uh, sort of within the context of what we have now. And I think that's really relevant, and I hope, I, I'm sorry to say I did not follow the, the council discussion, but in the idea that, oh, well, we're waiting on some pieces, I hope they realize that there's a disincentive to wait on the rest of the pieces, that, right. that yeah. it provides, it provides a, a much better structure for what we would like to have happen than what we currently have. Right. Right. I think that came across. I mean. I was surprised that it that it's gotten this far. Once it, it took that final step, that it's moved forward so quickly. Yeah. I wasn't mm -hmm. I was anticipating like, yeah. some pushback mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But at the end, all the it never really reached 
the crescendo that I thought it would, and then at the end it kind of, it kind of petered out. Those last mm -hmm. yeah. two hearings we had were pretty quiet, right. and uh, mm -hmm. and so maybe that's a good indication of that people started to get it because I think the the I always thought there was some not confusion but the misunderstanding on we weren't we weren't changing. Right. I keep going back. We weren't changing what existed. We were reflecting what exists. Right. And more previously and more existed. More so than anything. Mm -hmm. Right. And maybe people started to get that. Mm -hmm. Okay, 7.15. Um, we've wasted enough time. Uh, on to our second hearing, uh, which is a site plan amendment for, for a four single family home, the Village Hill, uh, Laurel Street, Northampton Map ID 38A 142 145. I need to make a note of disclosure. Um, Berkshire Design is going to make the presentation. Yep. Uh, we are, I am currently working with Berkshire Design on a couple other projects. If anyone here has an issue with that, I don't, I don't feel it impacts my ability to be impartial. So I just want to throw that out there and we're good on that. Okay. Um, so, yep, come on up and uh, let's jump in on this one. Hello, I'm Eric Melly from Berkshire Design Group. Um, and I'm here with Pam Kimball from Transformations. Essentially, this is a, an amended site plan for the Laurel Street subdivision. Um, Angora Home, Home sold it to transition Transformations, and they have new housing designs. Um, essentially, all the, the plantings, utilities, driveway locations are the same. Um, still seeking the same waiver for no site lighting. And it's about it. It's, it's not the sizes of the houses aren't much changed, um, just the styles. And I have some color architectural cut sheets if you guys don't have a copy of them. Different than what we have. I know there's some late, Jeff sent out some late uh, elevations. Maybe you probably have the farmhouse and the Greek. Yes. Yep. You, you, you don't have a color of the Victorian, okay. I'm guessing. No. No two houses that are the same will be placed next to each other. Oh, that's so these so are four houses, you've got three potential designs. Yes. And the visually the big thing is that they're going to have garages. Yep. So um, we proposed some different windows for the garage doors, uh, different garage doors in general that just are more interesting and look a bit more appealing to the Are those, would you use the same style for the Victorian, for the garage doors? Yeah, the garage door style would be this style. For, for every, for all the houses. Oh, okay. So this really isn't changed from what was submitted in the package, except for the set back. Yeah, you just didn't get a color, color version of that one, I think. Because okay. that's the, that's just basically showing the color of the yeah, is there any, um, anyone from the public who needs to see this? No. Oh. Or I'll have to really turn over my... <laughs> <laughs> There's a cut sheet on those. You've got to see a couple different styles. No, that, yep. Are these new to you, Carolyn? Um, since you wrote the staff report? No. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was attached. Well, I guess the window it's, I mean, it's a little yeah, recent yeah. stuff. It's different. Mm -hmm. So the, the two it's big issues that came up in staff right. and you were the same. Setback of the garages and the garage doors themselves. Correct. So the setback has been addressed. And now this is where we're at the garage doors. Yep. Yeah. Um, Instead of a yeah. stamp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Modestly oh, interesting. The 
verbiage in the design guidelines says garage doors shall be attractive with decorated iron or articulated wood panels. Are these, so we've, you've added windows. Mm -hmm. Is the. And hardware. Is it a panel it's door also, with windows? Also, or is it panels. A yeah. flush door. It has panels. And iron work. Teeny tiny windows. I suppose. <laughs> In the broadest sense. <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, questions from the board? I would just go on record in saying I like the new design better because it doesn't have a long impervious driveway on each lot. Mm -hmm. So to that sense, I like it better. And I could see all practicality of having an attached garage. And any of those doors are fine. I don't think it's mine to pick. I had a hard time remembering. Were there shared driveways in the other one that went back? How Originally, was there was sh there were <laughs> shared dri they were showing shared driveways, and they came back to you for approval of um, individual. individual driveways. So they had gotten that approved for this okay. iteration. But they were pretty far back on. Yeah, the yeah. site plans in here yeah. Yeah. showing what that approval. So was. I mean, that's just one advantage I see for yeah. new design. There are also zero energy homes in the old ones, so. Mm -hmm. Some more environmental design. Yeah, and they're not big lots, so mm -hmm. like no. better lot, more environmental, more natural lot issue and less paving. Rear mm -hmm. landscaping that we were really had a lot of discussion on to try to the shielding from the big building above. It. Can you speak to that, uh, Eric? There was questions before on on the building placement, and then and and the view from the housing up the hill, and you've, you've got a buffer plant, a screen buffer plant. And do you know how that uh, does that differ at all substantially from what was previously there, or no? No, the I, I believe the plantings are the same as we said it was the same design when we made this remark. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's it shown as a match. It's shown as the same. I mean, it looks, I didn't know if that was for a convenience sake or if that's what's really happening. So. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Is anyone here from the public who uh, have any questions regarding this? So this is two years ago that we approved. Yeah, because I remember Skinny Atlas. Yeah, because that's a funny name. For yeah. So uh, that's right. August yeah, first. That's, yeah. that's Buffalo area. Yeah. Skinny yeah. Atlas. Yeah. <laughs> it's not as good as Kenna but yeah, close. <laughs> right up there with it. August 1st, 2011. This is about two years. Should he get mine? That will make him happy, I'm sure. That's his friend. Oh. Uh, well, he missed out because he missed the meeting. Oh, then it's mine. <laughs> He'll get mine. Although I had to tell Alita because it'll probably mix her up. Oh, right. And I'm just handing it out to him. <laughs> the other question while they were looking at it was the, uh, the front porches, if you were. Um, so I think the garage issue has been addressed, the, the door and the setback. And then the, the porch, they got rid of the Northampton style yep. house. And so now, was that the fourth style That was the house fourth now? style. We're down to three, three yeah. houses. No, I think we originally had three styles and we oh, substituted it out for a different style. Okay. 
And that style had the smaller porch. Right. I don't think it had the blended facade with no step back. But does anyone have any issues with the, from a design standpoint? No. Uh, regarding the public comment, any, any questions on, on what you see? Comment. Second. Second. All in favor? Further discussion. We proved it once. I think I, I agree with Deb and I, I like it better the second time around. Mm -hmm. um, they're cleaner, they're tighter, and they might be more attractive with, with the garages. And maybe that's why. Well, and those lots are pretty close to the Mill River, and so the less, you know, the more. I don't want to create more runoff in right. Right. what you were talking about. Right. I just think it's a better design for where it is. Right. Mm -hmm. I think they each have their own filtration system behind it, too. Okay. okay. Well, this is easy. We move, we approve site plan amendment for single family homes, Village Hill, Laurel Street, Northampton, map ID 38A 142 145. Second. Second, Ann. All in favor? You're approved. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Yes, you too. Thank you. Thank you. Getting your old record back. No kidding. <laughs> That's what you did at the time. <laughs> Can't let Frandy take it. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Any other issues for tonight? Move for adjournment. Second. All in favor? Should I, write, wow. should I do 729 or 730? 29. 29.